there. There we go. Three, Ooh. two, and mm. one. Uh, well, Marisa, welcome back uh, to Mayor's Monday, WSAU, WSAU.com. I guess welcome back to work. You were yeah, uh, well, you were gone well, for a while. Do, I, you, have, I, do you have pictures? I, we did take some vacation time, um, although every vacation we take is a working vacation, right? There's always stuff that comes up. So my wife allows me some time in the morning uh, before we get kind of moving mm -hmm. and uh, in the evening before we kind of get to bed to catch up on emails. And then, of course, anything critical that gets called during the day, I have to take. Uh, and we, we had a few things that we needed to take care of. But generally speaking, it was a, a nice vacation. Got up in the, in the morning and swam in the ocean and... Uh, did all sorts of cool things, relaxing. So it was it was worth it. I'm ready to get back and uh, start filling potholes again. Well, um, it, and yeah, absolutely, you're back uh, just in time because there's obviously um, a couple of things that are taking up a lot of your time mm -hmm. this week, and for very good reason. Uh, so first off, uh, we'll we'll talk about the little elephant in the room, uh, <laughs> which I don't know that we've talked about yet before, but um, it's there. See uh, U.S. Senior Open Championship uh, percentage of ready that the city is right now. Scale from one to one hundred percent. How ready are you for this thing coming up here in three weeks? So I'll give you a a, a broader answer. Right, um, personally, I feel eighty percent ready, but in reality, I think we're ninety five, ninety six percent there, uh, and that is because. You're always nervous about what if, what if, what if. Uh, if you remember just a few years ago when we hosted the junior golf, uh, junior girls golf championship, three days before the tournament, we got one of the w worst windstorms that we've ever had. It completely tore up and uprooted trees in the field and everything. Um, we scrambled and got a volunteer. It was, it was like you see in the movies, right? People are showing up with their pickup trucks and chainsaws. How can I help? Uh, and we pulled it off. We did, even though we didn't have power in some locations, uh, we pulled it off and and everybody had a really good experience. The same thing's going to happen here, right? Um, hopefully minus the storms. I think we're ready, uh, but I'm always a little nervous on the inside because, boy, what if this really weird freak thing happens? Uh, are we prepared for it? And generally speaking, I think our teams, both uh, the USGA, Century, um, and all of the people that have been working to help organize and plan this out, We've literally been working on it for a year and a half, and mm -hmm. I think we're very well prepared, even for those things that we can't predict. Um, of course, that falls on the same weekend as Riverfront Rendezvous, um, so we want to make sure that we have enough food and, and drinks for people who choose to come down and, and see some evening entertainment. We've got some great bands, by the way, if you want to talk about that. Um, but yeah, I think everybody's set. I was at uh, Century World just the other day. And they've got all their bleachers and grandstands and hospitality and VIP booths. Uh, they're they're all set. They are working on making that course immaculate. Um, and I really believe that those thousands and thousands of people that are going to be joining us for this U.S. Senior Open are going to have not only a great golf event, but anything they do outside of that golf event, I think they're going to have a really good experience. I know all of the the businesses in Stevens Point and hospitality and service industry, otherwise, they're all gearing up to make sure that everyone has a great experience. Uh, the Airbnb uh, vacation rentals have been going gangbusters. Oh, yeah. Uh, we still get people asking about it. So all of that information is available at StevensPoint.com. You can search for temporary rentals, short-term rentals. Um, they're also, the Convention and Visitors Bureau is putting together uh, a business owner's toolkit, you can go to uh, their website and get information on how you can best prepare your business. And most importantly, how to help market it to the thousands of visitors we're going to have. Um, so you want to make sure that not only are you doing something uh, for the visitors, but that they know you're doing something. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to participate there. Yeah, and uh, you brought up a great point in there. And in fact, this was actually the next question I was going to ask you. So we'll go right into it, uh, because obviously you have thought about a lot of things. You've been having meetings even in the last uh, six months ago. You were having meetings with the police department, emergency responders. What happens if we have an injury crash on the interstate that ends up snarling traffic as they're trying to get to Century World? Wow. These things have been thought about yes. uh, in advance. 
So what, uh, I guess, first off, what is like the, the one meeting that you've had through this whole process where you were like, wait a minute, I never thought about this. This is going to be so much more complicated. We've got thousands of more people in here. What's that one thing where you've been like, wow, uh, the team around me has thought of everything and we are going to put this, pull this off. Yeah. Um, it, it's supply chain issues, right? Um, I think that's really the biggest concern for me, that I still worry about, um, all of those thousands of people need to do everyday things, right? Eat, drink, sleep. Um, I think we got the sleep thing covered. We're the city of wonderful water, so we got a plenty, plenty of water and drinking uh, beer breweries if we need that. Um, soda manufacturers, etc. But food, I think, could be could be challenging, right? Everybody, every restaurant knows what to expect on a normal Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday night. Uh, and then they up their game usually on Fridays and Saturdays. Well, we don't really know what to expect um, with these, let, let's say 10,000 people come out to eat. Okay. My restaurant seats 60. I have freezer capacity for a week. Many don't even keep food a week. They usually order twice a week. And boy, if my truck uh, on Tuesday, if I realize, oh, wow, I'm going to run out before the weekend and my supplier can't get me a hundred or a thousand extra hamburgers, I could be put in a lousy spot at the top of the, the game here on, on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Same with, you know, Riverfront Rendezvous, for example. On the busy days on fireworks night, the food lines are really long, especially during the peak lunch and dinner times. Um, throw another couple thousand people on there and it doesn't take much to overwhelm you. Uh, now the person who's last in line is like, Jesus, I had to wait, you know, 45 minutes for an order of cheese curds. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We don't want that to happen. So I've, I've been stressing as much as I can to any business owner groups or, or individuals that I see plan ahead. Um, I don't know if they're going to choose to rush your place maybe a group of 50 get together they're like hey let's go down to blah blah blah's place mm -hmm. um so you could get you could get inundated pretty quick or maybe they're like no nope, we're just gonna hang around here and they never even make it to your side of town or your business uh, maybe they don't aren't aware of it uh, so you just done a ton of stockpiling for no good reason those are the things that keep me up at night currently well, that and the fact that we got a new dog. We've got a new dog, Link. <laughs> He's a Humane Society Rescue, and he is right. four days in my house as of today. So that, hey. that keeps me up at night, too. Yeah, congratulations. And thank you for adopting, uh, by the way, from all of us who are advocates for uh, for animals in the Humane Societies. Thank you uh, for adopting. Uh, so, yeah, that's, it. that's just exactly it. That's probably... Uh, so I would say the one thing that uh, if that, there's anything that the city's not prepared for, it's that you've never had to feed this many people at one time. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and and it's honestly unpredictable, mm -hmm. right? So we we don't know. Maybe everybody's going to suddenly want Chinese food, right? And, and you get five thousand people that hit every Chinese restaurant in the city. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, maybe it's the other way too, because. Maybe we got 10,000 extra people or 50,000 extra people in the city, whatever it happens to be over the course of the tournament, and only 200 decide to come out and about on Friday night. That could happen. Mm -hmm. You spend all day on the golf course, boy, I just want to go to bed. Right. I do that. <laughs> so um, yeah. the unpredictability of it is, the, uh, is one of the big variables that we literally have no control over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and again, though, I've, a lot of us, we've got full confidence. You're going to pull this off. Oh, yeah. It is going to be the best summer in Stevens Point ever. And this is only going to be a precursor, though, to what will happen in two years when the NFL draft comes to Green Bay. You're right. Is this something now that's on your radar and you're thinking, OK, there's maybe some aspect of this tournament that we're pulling off right now that we need to remember because it's going to come back around in two years when there will be 70 or 80,000 people inundating Green Bay in a city with 5,000 hotel rooms. And by the way, most of those hotel rooms are taken up by NFL officials and draft prospects mm -hmm. and sponsors, meaning those 70,000 people probably got to find hotel rooms as far away as 
Stevens Point in Wausau. And we welcome them with open arms. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. The The plans that we have here, the experiences that we have during this event uh, will go forward, just like past events have played into this one, right? The the U.S. or the, the Junior Girls Golf Championship was a massive deal, arguably at the time the biggest event Century World had hosted, but they didn't start from scratch either. They're, they have professionals that, that work with this. Uh, and Steve Marino is working with us from the USGA. Mm -hmm. He That's his job. He plans these events. So he brought with him that experience of knowing, well, we need to check this box and this box and this box because he's had years of experience and multiple events of this size. That helps. But there's always those variables, right? Weird things can happen. Uh, boy, you have a windstorm two days or three days before the golf tournament. What do you do? Well, that information gets put in. And now here's a contingency plan. If you have a, a, a catastrophic weather event, here's some of the things that have worked in the past. Here's ways we could have done it better. So I think our um, our plan, if you will, and it's a it's a binder that's about this thick uh, with everything that is going on and contact numbers and what if situations. If I, this happens, who do I call? Uh, I think that's going to be used as a roadmap for the NFL draft. I would I would welcome anyone who wants to come here and stay. It's a short drive, relatively speaking. And if we get enough people, heck, we could have bus shuttle services. And uh, I can guarantee it will be a lot less crowded. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, and and because this is just, I mean, I don't think we've had a couple of weeks now to digest this. You know, we found out about two weeks ago that Green Bay was going to be hosting this. Now mm -hmm. that we've had time to, to plan it, I think it's set in that this is probably the single biggest sporting event that wisconsin can host and everybody in the state is going to be benefiting from this and, and you know maybe you more than hudson uh more than lacrosse or platteville the closer you get to green bay uh so i think everybody really needs to uh to play ball to pull this off and i'm sure again that's something that probably popped into your mind right away when that announcement got yeah. made yeah it, it's going to be a huge economic boost just like the u.s tournament is going to be uh, millions of dollars being injected into our community. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to get a, a piece of that to help make their experiences great. Because I credit this to Sarah Brish. I'm sure she heard it somewhere else, but tourism is literally the first date you have with a community, right? You, mm -hmm. You're there for another reason, whether it's a, a sporting event or a youth thing, or uh, you're going to see a concert or whatever it happens to be. That's your first experience with that community. And if you like what you see, you're going to want to come back. And uh, that happens to me all the time. If you don't like what you see, then you're not coming back. And I got a few of those cities on my list too. Absolutely. Is this the most, we're 13 minutes in, is this the most sports that you've ever talked in your life? It is. And honestly, I'm faking it because I don't know anything about sports. So when you say draft, I think, boy, you know, put a jacket on, maybe a sweater <laughs> or a scarf. Uh, and we can solve this problem easy. Why do you need all these people showing up? <laughs> uh, and are these people creating the draft? I mean, is it the yeah. influx of people, the rush of uh, Indeed. them coming in? Yeah. And, Does that and create the win that, that creates the draft? We, no. we we just have to hope that that draft, because again, this is a lot of people coming into a short space. We just have to hope that wind doesn't blow Lambeau over. Then we've got other exactly. problems. Exactly. Isn't there a, a joke like that? Like why all the trees in Iowa lean north? Because Minnesota sucks. It's like a reverse. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm laughing because as a former Minnesotan, we have a lot of things to say about Iowa, and most of them I can't say <laughs> in this forum. <laughs> well, that's uh, like why Iowa doesn't have a professional football team. Because mm -hmm. then Minnesota would want one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I only know these jokes are funny because my friends laugh at them. <laughs> <laughs> Again, for those of you who don't know, Mayor Mike, not exactly the most sports savvy guy, but hey, you do know something about marketing the city and your events, and that's exactly uh, what you're in this position for as we get ready for, again, the USGA Senior Open and coming up yeah. in about three weeks here, the NFL Draft coming up in, in two years. All of us are going to stand to benefit from this, and that's what the last 14 minutes and 39 seconds have uh, been about. <laughs> so true, in the yeah. time that we have left, Mr. Mayor, uh, I know you like to promote all the other events uh, in your city right now, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of reasons to come into Stevens Point here in the next uh, few weeks. Let us know what uh, what those are. There certainly is. So live music options are exploding. Uh, 
Uh, Wednesdays are clearly the best. We have the city band playing. We've got Notes at Night on the Square. Goose on Main has live music. And PJs at Century World has live music. Those lists can be found on their respective websites or the Convention and Visitors Bureau website. Then Thursday night, we have Levitt Amp Music Series. That's down at Piffner Pioneer Park. You can get that schedule also off the CVB website or Create Portage County's website or Facebook page. Um, almost every weekend has some sort of festival. We're kicking off the festival season with our Pride Fest next weekend on June 10th. Um, then we have, of course, the Juneteenth celebrations. Throughout the summer, you're going to have, be having Art in the Park, Jazz Fest, um, Jam in July. Uh, the brewery, I know, is looking at doing some live music. Point, Stevens Point Brewery is looking at doing live music on their outdoor patio, which if you haven't been there, you need to show up. It's an outdoor beer garden mm -hmm. right at the brewery. Fabulous venue. Great Northern Distilling, which just opened its doors last month, um, is going to be doing live music as well. They have craft cocktails, and they're just on the north end of the downtown Stevens Point area, kind of by Emmy J's and Kim's Barrel Inn in that area. Uh, of course, District 1 always has live music. Mm -hmm. uh, they have trivia, bar trivia. They have uh, video games, pinball games, and things like that, plus kids' activities right there at District 1. Uh, church picnics, of course, every weekend is a different church picnic. And uh, we're going to continue this all the way through Labor Day. Of course, Riverfront Rendezvous, everybody knows about. We've got um, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy as kind of our headliner this year. A mm -hmm. lot of excitement about that. And that also culminates, Riverfront Rendezvous is with the uh, championship weekend of the USGA Men's Senior Open. So it's sure to be a fabulously attended event. Uh, Riverfront Rendezvous in and of itself has all of the usual stuff. They're having a horseshoe tournament, a pickleball tournament. We've got live music, trivia, tons of entertainment, food and drink. Uh, it's going to be one fabulous summer here in Stevens Point. Art, we're working on the trash canvas right now. We've got artists downtown doing a new painting on each of our trash cans. So you want to come down and see that. We just installed last Friday the free piano downtown. This one's a great one. It's a uh, pine theme themed and it was done by Tina Lepak, who's an art teacher at Pacelli Catholic schools. Looks fabulous. Get it down there and get playing it before it gets out of tune. Um, and then of course, all the regular conferences and conventions. Um, tomorrow, I think we have the International Arson Investigators uh, uh, Association has their annual uh, conference here, but conferences are gonna be going, live music's gonna be going. Art's going to be exploding. I would be, uh, I'd be surprised if you and I both don't have hearts that explode from all the things we're going to be doing this summer. Indeed. I, I'm tired just thinking about it, just hearing that <laughs> list. Wow. A lot, lot going on there in Stevens Point. A lot to be proud of. Mayor Weezo, we always appreciate the time. Uh, do One thing, do not shank that first drive at the century uh, at the u.s open if the, if you are called on to yeah. do the first drive at the tournament i expect nothing less than excellence i hadn't thought about that so um just this past weekend we had the girls fast pitch softball league that mm -hmm. kicked off their season and i threw out the first pitch for that um i wasn't great but i didn't screw it up real bad my just, favorite did you bounce was, it did you bounce I, it no i did a Good. slow pitch though okay so i'm not no, much fine. of a you know the rotator cuff isn't exactly what it used to be. <laughs> right, right. So I just didn't want to look like an idiot. Right. Uh, my right. favorite one, just a couple of weeks ago, they kicked off the youth baseball season. Mm -hmm. And I got to throw out the first pitch, but I'm like, okay, good. And I practiced a little bit at home. Well, it turns out the first pitch was T-ball. So, so I set the ball <laughs> on the stick. Okay. All that warm up and work for nothing. <laughs> that shows you how much I know about sports, right? But if I do get a chance to like hit the opening tee mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is, um, I don't know what I'm going to do because Just I have don't. I have very very little experience uh, with golfing. Just don't shank it, and and that's shanking it is when you hit it poorly, like it hits you hit the, it poorly and it goes off to the right. My ball. Yeah. When I hit it, it has a turn signal and everything. Oh, really? Okay. It, it, right. Yeah, I, it, it's terrible. It's terrible. So, is there a way where I could get like a like a cannon and just like launch the the golf ball instead of hitting it? Is that allowed? I saw it in Caddyshack. They had. I think, I think we can make something work. Jackie Mason had all the cool clubs with all the, or was it Rodney Dangerfield? One of them had all the cool clubs. Oh yeah. That oh, did yeah. all the extra 
funky stuff. So those just are the as, ones I want to use. Just as long as you don't have a gopher messing with the tournament. <laughs> That's right. Mayor Weasel, we always appreciate the time. We'll look forward to uh, to chatting again next month when you're all rested up from your big weekend. All righty. You have a good one. See ya. Yep.